Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine. In this video, I'm going to talk about the force input and force input box macros within Harlow. So as we've previously seen with the input and input box macros from Harlow, we can get user input. We can get a single line or a single sentence using input, multiple lines from input box. However, there might be some special use cases where we want to force some type of input. We want the user to appear to have the choice to input something, but actually force them to input something else. And this is where the force input and force input box macros come into play. So right here, I'm notice I'm using force input. So it looks like the input macro, but it has a force and a hyphen ahead of it. And then I have what would be in the input macro, the default value that would appear. In this case, we're going to force the player to produce the word player. So let's go ahead and start the story from this point. I've already got it selected as a starting passage and we will go. So this forces me to type player. So regardless of what I press, any key on the keyboard, I will get, as long as I'm pressing letters, player. So let me go ahead and refresh this. And in this case, I'm just going to press A, which you will have to take on faith since you can't see my keyboard. And notice I just keep pressing things and pressing things and pressing things and nothing happens and I get player. So force input forces that particular input. This is also shared with its sister macro, force input box. So when we use input, we get a single line. When we get input box, we have multiple lines. Force input gives us forcing a single line. Force input box gives us forcing multiple lines. So let's go ahead and change the story start to the second passage right here, example two. This time we have multiple lines. No matter what I type, I will get I am a stinky goblin. I'm not though. So notice we can force that input. So force input, force input box. There's one other thing to be aware of when we use either macro. Like we saw with input and force input, we can also use the bind keyword, which seems a little strange at first. Why would we want to bind a variable if we're forcing a player to input something? Well, there might be cases where we need to know, did the full thing get inputted or not? So let's look at the particular example. So in this case, using force input, I'm binding to the temporary variable password right here, and I'm asking the player to produce unknown. Now, they may not produce that. And so right here, I have a link rerun submit. So every time this link is clicked, it will rerun the code within the hook. And this is the hook right here from the open and closing square brackets. So in this case, I'm using two different if statements. In this case, if the temporary password, notice the underscore, temporary password is not unknown, I say you must enter the correct name. If it is unknown, I say very good unknown. So I'm forcing the player to input something, force input, and then I'm checking to verify they actually did what I asked them to do. So let's go ahead and move the start of the passage, or the start of the story over here to example three, go to build and play. So again, it seems strange to use this, but there might be cases where they start to input something and they go, oh, I'm in forced input. Maybe they have knowledge of this and maybe like, ah, I'm going to skip this. And they click submit. No, you must enter the correct name. Okay, well, keep pressing keys on the keyboard until I get unknown. I click submit. It says very good. So we see in this video that we can use force input or force input box to force input from the user. With force input, we can get a single line. With force input box, we can get multiple lines. We can also, as we saw with input and input box, use the bind keyword to be bound to a variable and save whatever is entered. So we can verify, did they actually input the thing we asked them to do? As we saw over here in example three, we use something like link rerun or other combinations using the if macro to confirm things. And then we can check, did they actually do it or not? Alternatively, we can just force them to type things if we want until they get tired and they move on to something else. But this video has been a review of how to use force input and force input box to force input from a particular user using these corresponding macros in Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.